Hello, I'm Corey, and thank you for visiting my channel. I was recently asked how I make my clusters, my um, small cluster embellishments with scrap paper. And there are several different ways people do it. Everybody uses them. I do it a little bit differently than some folks. Um, I don't start with everything, like all the embellishments and bits and pieces. I just start with um, a bin of scrap paper. And I build the base first with just using the scrap paper. And then um, I build on from there. So I do those and then I do the next step. But um, another friend also asked me, how do you, if you're going to ink, because I almost always ink things, if you're going to ink, how do you choose your ink? And it really depends on your preference and your style. So I really quickly just did these. If you want a super, super light, I don't even know how well you can see that, super light, um, and this is all on off-white cardstock, super light image or super light shading, old paper's great for that. If you want something just a little bit more visual, or if I'm wanting to touch something up lightly, antique linen is a good choice. I've inked all the way around it, and you can see it's barely there, but it is there. Um, vintage photo is a very popular one. It has, I don't know how it'll show up on camera, but it has a bit of an orange tin, tinge, and I like orange, so I'm, I'm absolutely fine with it. This is very popular, common with many people. Um, the next darkest shade, if you will, is a little bit more orange. It's called brush corduroy, and so it's supposed to be a brown, but it's very much an orangey brown. And the one I use, my personal preference, is Walnut Stain. It is um, just kind of like a dark brown with a grunge to it, like you would see on my hands all the time and in walnuts. And so that is the one I generally tend to use. Ground Espresso is just a little bit darker. And I, I like this if I want to just get the edge. So I'll use my Walnut Stain and then I'll just do the very tips of the edges with the Ground Espresso because it's a, a darker brown. Um, if you like the grayish black look to your edges, Black Suit is kind of um, a medium shade of gray. It gets darker at the edges and lighter as you move in. But it's not really black and it's not really gray. So Black Suit. And then just this black archival ink. This is just a regular old black, and you get that look. So if you like ink, and if you like the look of ink on your um, clusters or your embellishments or your junk journals, these are some of the different inks that you can use. Um, okay, for this, for this, I'm going to show you clusters three different ways. And these are literally torn pieces of paper. I've got four different selections here from my scrap bin and I got them roughly the same size. So this will be cluster one, and this is gonna have no ink, well, these are all coffee dyed, but um, no ink other than what's on my fingers on this section. And then this will be section two, which is the same, like I said, same basic four pieces, but just using ink, nothing extra. Like um, I won't sew it or I won't put gloss or wax or any of those things. So this will be section two, so plain, um, just ink, and then ink and all the trimmings and all the, um, diff well, not all the different, but the things I generally do to my embellishments when I finish them up. So um, after I've just randomly selected scraps, I will get um, a glue stick to glue in place because I usually sew mine. I don't always, but I usually do. Um, don't get this glue stick. It I had it left over from my classroom. I like the Gorilla glue stick and other people have really good luck with you who and some others. Try for yourself, you'll find something you like. So, okay, and the first thing I do when I do, when I have these scraps is I kind of take the smallest pieces and lay them out and to figure out how I want them to go. And it, it's no more complicated than that. And then I'll put down just a little bit of glue and I can come back in Oh, let's see if I'm in frame, sorry. Come back in later and add more glue if I need to. But this way, if I wanna move it or I'm not happy with where the placement is, it's really easy to pick up. So like that one wasn't straight. So I can just pick that up and move it over. And then I'm gonna put it on there, the background. And do I want it this way or this way? And then literally I just move it around and play with it. If it's too big, I'll tear some off. If it's too small, I'll grab another scrap. It's it's no more complicated than that. And then I will, you know what? I just realized this isn't gonna show it very well on my, I put brown paper down because the, the glare can be awful um, on the mat. So I put some brown paper down, but this isn't gonna show it very well on that brown paper. Well, heck. Okay, and then 
And then I'm just gonna take the last scrap and decide where I want that. Do I want it off to the side? Do I want it here? Do I want it up? Do I want it down? And, and that's it. I just kind of play around, move it around a little bit and glue it in place. And this is my first base. Now remember this one, I don't like it right there. This one has no ink. And to save time and because nobody likes to watch everybody ink, I inked my pieces in advance. Okay, so there is my first base. And it's not embellished yet, but it's a base and I can build on this. And that's what I'm gonna do. So there is our naked base for want of a better term. And then here is, I'm just gonna ink. These are these have all been inked and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna lay them out to see where I like them. And uh, let's see if I'm in frame. Sorry, I'm trying to get it close enough but not get it too close. Okay, so I'm gonna lay it out like this. Glue it in place and continue layering. I start with my smaller pieces and I build up to my bigger pieces and then I'm going to add my narrow piece. Yep, that works. And again, these are all roughly the same size. They're not identical by any means, but they're they're similar. And, um, and then I want... Like that? Do I want it like? I think I want it like that. Okay, and then I will just glue that down. And am I out of frame again? Probably. There you go. Okay, and then my last one is also inked, but this the, the this one I'm going to do a little bit more to. I will um, sew on it and add glaze and add embossing uh, flop. Uh, gloss and that kind of thing and so you can just the idea is so you can see the difference um the different effects and the different looks you get by using just a little bit different techniques and whoops there's not really a right or a wrong way to do it it's just a matter of what you like and what you prefer to see so i'm making sure my words go in the correct direction um i think i want it like that am i even in remotely in frame okay uh, like this and then I'm going to glue this one and this is again just lightly glued see this is why I don't love this glue it bun bunches up like that all the time okay so I've got my three bases the naked base inked and then inked plus and now on this one what I will do is if you'll give me just one moment I'm going to go sew down this line because I like the look of sewn embellishments so I will be right back Some people like the threads left on theirs. Um, and I could have done a straight stitch, but my machine was set up for a zigzag, so I left it as a zigzag. I don't generally like all the loose threads, so I cut them off, but if you're a thread person, you can, add, whoops, sorry, out of frame. I can, add, you can absolutely leave them on. So cutting my threads off. And so now I have my bases. I have three separate bases, inked and sewn, just inked, and then plain, plain bases. And then my next step is usually some kind of a top, like um, a tea card or an image um, a die, uh, from a, oh, you know, digital kit, digital kit image or a die cut. And die cut is one that I use fairly frequently simply because I have them and I like them. I like that they let the pieces through. So, and I'm not going to glue these perfectly. If I were doing this um, perfectly, I would go through, use my art glitter glue and go through all those little lines and make sure that it adheres, adheres down. But because I'm not gonna use this probably because it's not um, inked or anything, it's just a sample, I'm not going to be as careful about getting ink on, or glue on everything. So then I will, again, lay this where I think it looks okay. And I use um, an ice scraper quite often because it allows me to not get with my ink from my hands all over my work and it does a good job of smoothing it down. So here we go. Here's a base, a basic base, um, die cut and some scrap paper, no ink and nothing else. And it, it's, it's a great embellishment. It would look good in any journal. 
but then you can kick it up just a tiny bit if you want to, if you like that look, if you like it a little more grungy. And I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I have also inked the die cut. I just went over it with my um, ink and then my blending brush, and I just added a little bit of ink to the same exact color of cardstock to give it just a little bit more depth. And I'm just putting, oh, I'm sorry, out of a screen there. I'm just putting the glue the nice thing about Art Glitter Glue is if I get a little bit of this out, it's not really going to show. And if it does, I can use my rubber cement square and pick it up. But for the most part, you, you don't even see it. And so I just make sure it's fairly well glued. And I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to randomly place this on my piece. Okay? And again... When I'm using delicate die cuts, I use the rubber side. Um, when I'm just gluing two pieces of paper together, I'll use the hard side. And if I'm using texture paste, I'll use this ridged side. Um, and again, it works out any bubbles and makes sure it's down. So you can see the difference between these two. And I'd go back in and glue a piece. This is no ink, and this is with ink. So there's the difference. And then I'm gonna do this last one. And this is the one I've got the sewn strip on. All right, it's just sewed a straight um, zigzag stitch. And so I will definitely use this because of the, um, you know, make a card front or the uh, front of a journaling card or a pocket or a belly band or a side tuck, or uh, you can use it a, a several different ways. But um, just making these up and having them on hand. And again, I do them in steps. I do the basis first and then I'll come in and, with my embellishment box and, and play with um, putting them all down and adding embellishments. Okay, and then I'm going to just move this one down. Okay. And I don't care, my fingers are inky, but I don't care because this is already inky and I like the grungy look. So, this is stitched with the, I don't know how well you can see it on camera, stitching on the side. No stitching but ink, and then just a naked embellishment. No ink at all, just the paper pieces, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing. Um, Tracy Fox tags are what I consider essential to finish pieces off. And I just grabbed a Tracy Fox tag, and um, I'll put it down there at the bottom. And uh, Oh, you can't even see it. I apologize. Uh just make sure it's mostly straight. And again, this is not an inked Tracy Fox tag, but this one is, and I've already inked these. Um, and I will put the inked tag here. Um, yeah, right there. Okay. And then on this last one, the one that I've sewn on, I will put another inked tag. And then if, <coughs> excuse me, I think I'll put, no, I want it over there. I'll put that there. All right, I could call these done and be absolutely fine. And then these two, I'm, well, no, you know, it needs a little bit more zhuzhin. So I think I will put, um, I think I've got some little itty bitty, well, maybe I don't. Little itty bitty brads here. And so I'm gonna do one more step on this just inked one. So this one I would call done and I would use that as my plain um, tag or my plain embellishment to put on, on something. And then the next one I want just a little bit more interest. So maybe I will put just a little itty bitty brad because I really, really like these little brads and I just think they're fun. So I'm gonna put a little bit of brad up there. And then I, before I would put this down on whatever I'm gonna use, I would glue these little bits down and make sure it's good. And then that's good, that's p perfectly fine. It's a, it's a nice embellishment and it's got ink and it's great. And then there's the one with the stitching, which is just, you know, one more step. And I'm gonna put a little brad on that one as well. And this one, I'm going to do a little bit more. Um, I've got the stitching on it, so that's one step. But I'm also going to add some Distress Glaze or Distress Wax. Um, just because I like the way it looks. And so I'll show you. Um, there's, the, there's the plain and there's the inked. And then there's this is just Distress Glaze. It's the Tim Holtz Distress Glaze. And I just put a little bit on my finger. And again, because I've already inked it, it doesn't matter that my finger is just covered in ink. And I rub, well, let's get in the screen here. I rub it over 
all of the paper, the whole surface, just like this. And watch what it does to the brown paper especially, but it does it to all the paper. So I'm going to rub it all around. And I'm even putting it over the die cut, you can see there. You don't need very much at all. I've had this for a long time, just a little. And I'll put it over the label, rub it into the book page. This is just an old um, antique dictionary. And Okay, and that's on top of the vellum. So that's on all of the paper. It's kind of got this waxy glaze, if you will. And then, once you've rubbed it in where you like it, you go in and you buff it with a clean or dry paper towel. And I'll just buff that out to get any excess wax or buildup off. Okay. And then I'll try to zoom it in close and show you the difference that these, these steps can make. Um, it's Again, there's no right or wrong. It's just a matter of what your personal preference is. So I have waxed this one and this one is not waxed. Do you see how it's kind of got, not a shine because it's not completely dry, but it's kind of got a, a different, different depth to it. Like if you look at these two papers, there's just another dimension, another depth to it. And then as my, for my last step, um, again, that's just inked. That's completely plain. This one, I would probably get, excuse my big arm, I would get Crystal Glaze, the Nouveau Deluxe Crystal Glaze. It's my favorite of these types of um, diamond glaze or glossy accents or what have you. This one dries quick and it's very smooth and easy to spread. And so for my label to give it a, a more of an antique look, uh, just a little bit of a shine, I'm gonna come over this and just put this glossy um, Nouveau Deluxe Glaze. Nouveau crystal glaze, excuse me, over the top. And uh, I don't know how well you can see it there. It just adds a little bit of a shine and it darkens the color. And you can see here, I got a little bit off to the side, but that's so not a big deal because I'll just come in with my finger and take it right off. So I'm not sure how much detail you can see on the screen, but um, so here is just the torn paper accent no extra extra steps I guess just torn paper embellishment and then here it is uh, torn and inked and maybe if I put them together you can see the difference and this one is torn and inked and glazed and waxed okay there's a little bit of a sheen there I don't know how well you can see it but again all of them are work just fine it's just a matter of what you prefer and how much time you want to spend on it all right, I hope that helped, and I hope it gave you some ideas for your own crafting and your own scrap embellishments. Have a great day.